defend myself I am attacked but in my defenselessness I will be strong and I will learn what my defenses hide if I defend myself I am attacked <laughs> if I defend myself I am attacked thank you all so much for joining me here on the banks of James River near Galena Missouri here on uh, Tuesday May the 14th of 2024 we're reading from the 2007 version of A Course in Miracles lesson 150 uh, 135 printed by Foundation for Inner Peace. And I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks. Thank you for joining me. If I defend myself, I am attacked. Who would defend himself unless he thought he were attacked, that the attack were real and that his own defense could save himself? And herein lies the folly of defense. It gives illusions full reality and then attempts to handle them as real. It adds illusions to illusions, thus making correction doubly difficult. And it is this you do when you attempt to plan the future, activate the past, or, or organize the present as you wish. You operate from the belief you must protect yourself from what is happening because it must contain what threatens you. A sense of threat is an acknowledgement of an inerrant weakness. A belief that there is danger which has power to call on you to make appropriate defense. The world is based on this insane premise. <laughs> I call that an insane premise. And all its structures, all its thoughts and doubts, its penalties and heavy armaments, its legal definitions and its codes, its ethics and its leaders and its gods, all serve but to preserve its sense of threat. For no one walks the world in armature but must have terror striking at his heart. Defense is frightening. It stems from fear, increasing fear as each defense is made. You think it offers safety, yet it speaks of fear made real and terror justified. Is it not strange you do not fear, yet it speaks of fear made real and terror justified? Is it not strange you do not pause to ask, as you elaborate your plans and make your armor thicker and your locks more tight, what you defend and how and against what? Let us consider first what you defend. It must be something that is very weak and easily assaulted. It must be something made easy prey, unable to protect itself and needing your defense. What but the body has such frailty that constant care and watchful deep concern are needful to protect its little life. What but the body falters and must fail to serve the Son of God as worthy host? Yet it is not the body that can fear, nor be a thing of fear. It has no needs but those which you assign to it. It needs no complicated structures of defense, no health-inducing medicine, no care and no concern at all. Defend its life, or give it gifts to make it beautiful, or walls to make it safe. And you but say your home is open to the thief of time, corruptible and crumbling, so unsafe it must be guarded with your very life. Is not this picture fearful? Can you be at peace with such a concept of your home? Yet what endows the body with the right to serve you thus except your own belief? It is your mind which gave the body all the functions that you see in it and set its value far beyond a little pile of dust and water. Who would make defense of something that he recognized as this? The body is in need of no defense. This cannot be too often emphasized. The body is in need of no defense. This cannot be too often emphasized. It will be strong and healthy if the mind that does not abuse it by assigning it to roles it cannot fill, to, pur to purposes beyond its scope, and to exalted aims which it cannot accomplish. Such attempts 
ridiculous yet deeply cherished, are the sources for the many mad attacks you make upon it. For it seems to fail your hopes, your needs, your values, and your dreams. The self that needs protection is not real. The body, valueless and hardly worthy the least defense, need merely be perceived as quite apart from you, and it becomes a healthy serviceable instrument through which the mind can operate until its usefulness is over. Who would want to keep it when its usefulness is done? Defend the body and you have attacked your mind, for you have seen it in the faults, the weaknesses, the limits, and the lacks from which you think the body must be saved. You will not see the mind as separate from bodily conditions, and you will impose upon the body all the pain that comes from the conception of the mind as limited and fragile, and apart from other minds, and separate from its source, capital S, source, God. There are thoughts in need of, oh, these are the thoughts in need of healing, and the body will respond with health when they have been corrected and replaced with truth. This is the body's only real defense. Yet is this where you look for its defense? You offer it protection of a kind from which it gains no benefit at all, but merely adds to your distress of mind. You do not heal, but merely take away the hope of healing, for you fail to see where hope must lie if it be meaningful. A healed mind does not plan. A healed mind does not plan. It carries out the plans that it receives through listening listening to wisdom that is not its own. It waits until it has been taught what should be done and then proceeds to do it. It does not depend upon itself for anything except its adequacy to fulfill the plans assigned to it. It is secure in certainty that obstacles cannot impede its progress to accomplishment of any goal that serves the greater plan established for the good of everyone. Wow, that's what we want. Follow the, the plan that, that uh, the, greater, the, the greater plan established for the good of everyone. Paragraph 12, a healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan. Although it cannot know the outcome which is, is best, the means by which it is achieved, nor how to recognize the problem that the plan is made to solve, it must misuse the body and its plans until it recognizes this is so. But when it has accepted this is true, then is it healed and lets the body go. Enslavement of the body to the plans the unhealed mind sets up to save itself must make the body sick. It is not free to be the means of helping in a plan which far exceeds its own protection and which needs its service for a little while. In this capacity is health assured, for everything the mind employs for this will function flawlessly and with the strength that has been given it and cannot fail. It is perhaps not easy to perceive that self-initiated plans are but defenses with the purpose all of them were made to realize. They are the means by which a frightened mind would understand its own protection at the cost of truth. This is not gift difficult to realize in some forms which these self-deceptions take, where the denial of reality is very obvious. Yet planning is not often recognized as a defense. Planning is not often recognized as a defense. The mind engaged in planning for itself is occupied in setting up control of future happenings. It does not think that it will be provided for unless it makes its own provisions. Time becomes a future emphasis. To be controlled by learning and experience obtained from past events and previous beliefs. It overlooks the present, for it rests on the idea the past has taught enough to let the mind direct its future course. The mind that plans is thus refusing to allow for change. What it has learned before becomes the basis for its future goals. Its past experience directs its choice of what will happen. 
and it does not see that here and now is everything it needs to guarantee a future quite unlike the past, without a continuity of any old ideas and sick beliefs. Anticipation plays no part at all, for present confidence directs the way. Defenses are the plans you undertake to make against the truth. Their aim is to select Select what you approve and disregard what you consider incompatible with your beliefs of your reality. Yet what remains is meaningless indeed, for it is your reality that is the threat which your defenses would attack, obscure, and take apart and crucify. What could you not accept if you but knew that everything that happens, all events past, present, and to come, are gently planned by one whose purpose is your good, and we'll sing that sentence in our song if we have time. What could you not accept if you but knew that everything that happens, all events past, present, and to come, are gently planned by one whose only purpose is your good? Perhaps you have misunderstood his plan, for he would never offer pain to you, but your defenses did not let you see his loving blessing shine in every step you ever took. While you made plans for death, he led you gently to eternal life. Your present trust in him is the defense that promises a future undisturbed, without a trace of sorrow, and with the joy that constantly increases as this life becomes a holy instant set in time, but heeding only immortality. Let no defenses but your present trust direct the future, and this life becomes a meaningful encounter with the truth that only your defenses would conceal. Without defenses, you become a light which heaven gratefully acknowledges to be its own, and it will lead you on in ways appointed for your happiness according to the ancient plan begun when time was born. Your followers will join their light with yours, and it will be increased until the world is lighted up with joy. And gladly will our brothers lay aside their cumbersome defen defenses. And gladly will our brothers lay aside their cumbersome defenses, which availed them nothing and could only terrify. We will anticipate that time today with present confidence, for this is part of what was planned for us. We will be sure that everything we need is given us for our accomplishment of this today. We make no plans for how it will be done, but realize that our defenselessness is all that is required for the truth to dawn upon our minds with certainty. For 15 minutes twice today, we rest from senseless planning and from every thought that blocks the truth from entering our minds. Today we will receive instead of plan, that we may give instead of organize. And we are given truly, as we say, if I defend myself, I am attacked. But in my defenselessness, I will be strong, and I will learn what my defenses hide. Nothing but that. If there are plans to make, you will be told of them. They may not be the plans you thought were needed, nor indeed the answers to the problems which you thought confronted you. But they are answers to another kind of question, which remains unanswered yet in need of answering until the answer comes to you at last. All your defenses have been aimed at not receiving what you will receive today, and in the light and joy of simple trust you will but wonder why you ever thought that you must, def must be defended from release. Heaven asks nothing. It is hell that makes extravagant demands for sacrifice. You give up nothing in these times today when undefended. You, press, you present yourself to your Creator as you really are. He has remembered you. Today we will remember Him, for this is Easter time in your salvation. And you rise again from what was seeming death and hopelessness. Now is the light of hope reborn in you. For now you come without defense to learn the part for you within the plan of God. What little plans or magical beliefs can still have value when you have received your func function from the voice for God himself? Try not to shape this day as you believe would benefit you most. 
for you cannot conceive of all the happiness that comes to you without your planning. Learn today, and all the world will take this giant stride and celebrate your Easter time with you. Throughout the day, as foolish little things appear to raise defensiveness in you and tempt you to engage in weaving plans, remind yourself, this is a special day for learning and acknowledge it with this. This is my Easter time and I would keep it holy. I will not defend myself because the Son of God needs no defense against the truth of his reality. <laughs> Okay, well, let's go look at our text. It was a little longer reading today. You know what to do. Two 15-minute practice periods and keep the idea alive through the day by saying, if I defend myself, I am attacked. But, if, but in my defenselessness, I will be strong and I will learn what my defenses hide. And our text reading for today is um, chapter 15, section 2 which is the end of doubt. And uh, let's see, was there anything going on around the world from uh, holidays and observances? Um, International Dylan Thomas Day, he was a Welsh poet born in 1914. Uh, though, though lovers be lost, love shall not. And, and, and death shall have no dominion. <laughs> couldn't read my writing. Thought that was a nice little saying from Dylan Thomas. Uh, the only other thing, it's underground day. Then uh, there's, a, I'll put the, the all of them that, that, um, that were listed with uh, holidaysandobservances.com. But underground day, I, 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 an architect that I would encourage you to look into if you like to live underground or, or kind of live, you know, semi underground, berms and whatnot. Uh, Malcolm Wells, um, anyway, Underground Day is celebrates underground living, which I think is something that would be really very beneficial for mankind to move into that. It gives more green space to the ground and it's less energy to keep your house warm and cool and um, more protected from uh, adverse conditions on the surface like uh, strong winds. Uh, and then in edible landscaping, the flory peach Flory is a genetic dwarf green leafed peach. Flory is a self fertile white peach with showy double pink flowers, very disease resistant and dependable. The free stone fruit ripens late, first week in September. S seeds from fruits are true to type. That's kind of nice. Good fresh, up to five foot tall. Uh, space eight foot circles, zones five through eight. And they also mentioned it was nice for a, for growing in container like a patio peach. So, uh, okay, now let's go look at our uh, text reading. And it's not near as long as our, uh, our other reading was. Uh, the end of doubt, uh, chapter 15. Chapter 15 is the holy instant. The end of doubt. The atonement is in time, but not for time. Being in you, it is eternal. What holds remembrance of God cannot be bound by time. No more are you. For unless God is bound, you cannot be. An instant offered to the Holy Spirit is offered to God on your behalf. And in that instant, you will awaken gently in him. In the blessed instant, you will let go all your past learning and the Holy Spirit will quickly offer you the whole lesson of peace. What can take time when all the obstacles to learning it have been removed? Truth is so far beyond time that all of it happens at once. For as it was created one, so its oneness depends not on time at all. Do not be concerned with time and fear not the instant of holiness that will remove all fear. For the instant of peace is eternal because it is without fear. It will come being the lesson God gives you through the teacher he has appointed to translate time into eternity. Blessed is God's teacher, whose joy it is to teach God's holy son his holiness. His joy is not contained in time. His teaching is for you because his joy is yours. Through him you stand before God's altar where he gently translates hell into heaven. For it is only in heaven that God would have you be. <laughs> 
How long can it take to be where God would have you? For you are where you have forever been and will forever be. All that you have, you have forever. The blessed instant reaches out to encompass time as God extends himself to encompass you. You who have spent days, hours, and even years in enchaining your brothers to your ego in an attempt to support it and uphold its weakness, do not perceive the source of strength. In this holy instant, you will unchain all your brothers and refuse to support either their weakness or your own. You do not realize how much you have misused your brothers by seeing them as sources of ego support. As a result, they witness to the ego in your perception and seem to provide reasons for not letting it go. Yet they are far stronger and much more compelling witnesses for the Holy Spirit, and they support His strength. It is therefore your choice whether they support the ego or the Holy Spirit in you, and you will recognize which you have chosen by their reactions. A son of God who has been released through the Holy Spirit in a brother is always recognized. He cannot be denied. If you remain uncertain, it is only because you have not given complete release. And because of this, you have not given a single instant completely to the Holy Spirit. For when you have, you will be sure you have. You will be sure because the witness to him will speak so clearly of him that you will hear and understand. You will doubt until you hear one witness whom you have wholly released through the Holy Spirit, and then you will doubt no more. The holy instant has not happened to you. Yet, the holy instant has not yet happened to you. Yet it will, and you will recognize it with perfect certainty. No gift of God is recognized in any other way. You can practice the mechanics the holy of the you can practice the mechanics of the holy instant and will learn much from doing so. Uh, the mechanics of it is close your eyes and be still and quiet. <laughs> and he says you can practice the mechanics of the holy instant and will learn much from doing so. Yet its shining and glittering brilliance which will literally blind you to this world by its own vision you cannot supply. And here it is, all in this instant, complete, accomplished, and given wholly. And the last paragraph, paragraph six, and before I read it, I just wanted to mention, you know, we, we want to go internally, learn to turn off the mind and be still in thought. And that's where we learn to see a, a whole new world. So the mechanics of the holy instant is... To, to still the mind and still the body and close the eyes, you might say. Even though that's not an absolute requirement, you probably could reach the holy instant with your eyes open, but generally uh, a closed eyes and quiet mind. In the last paragraph six, start now to practice your little part in separating out, separating out the holy instant. You will receive very specific instructions as you go along. To learn to separate, separate out this single second and to experience it as timeless is to begin to experience yourself as not separate. Fear not that you will not be given help in this. God's teacher and his lesson will support your strength. It is only your weakness that will depart from you in this practice. For it is the practice of the power of God in you. Use it but for one instant and you will never deny it again. Who can deny the presence of what the universe bows to in appreciation and gladness before the recognition of the universe that witnesses to it? Your doubts must disappear. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, uh, we've already kind of mentioned, be sure to do your 215 minute mechanics of the holy instant. And, of course, the, the internal mechanics, you'll be led if you just sit still and quiet and wait for guidance. Don't plan, he says. Follow guidance. If I defend myself, I am 
I'm attacked But in my defenselessness I will be strong And I will learn what my Defenses hide If I defend myself I am attacked But in my defenselessness I will be strong And I will learn what my Defenses hide As foolish little things appear to raise Defensiveness in you And tempt you to engage in weaving plans Remind yourself This is my Easter time And I would make it holy I will not defend myself Because the Son of God needs no Needs no defense against the truth of his reality what could you not accept if you knew that everything everything that happens all events past present and to come are gently planned by one whose only purpose is your good if I defend myself defenselessness I will be strong and I will learn what my defenses hide if I defend myself I am attacked but in my defenselessness myself I am attacked but in my defenselessness I will be strong if I defend myself I am attacked let's don't defend ourselves let's let the Holy Spirit guide us follow the guidance in my defenselessness, I will be strong, and I will learn what my defenses hide. And let's see, do we have, we have, we're, we're looking good on time. Let's just, since it's this um, Dylan Thomas day, let's me read that. Though lovers be lost, love shall not, and death shall have no dominion. I just thought that was kind of a nice one of his sayings. Uh, you know, you, you can't really lose a, a lover anyway, you know, you love is eternal. There is no love but God's and it's eternal. But um, I think what he was trying to say is if someone dies and you loved him, you can't really lose because death has no dominion. <laughs> okay, our Welsh word for peace is hedoof. So hedoof be with you, hedoof. If I defend myself, I am attacked. But in my defenselessness, I will be strong. And I will learn what my defenses hide. Hedoof.